Hey guys, what's going on? Mark Jones, Blackstone Carpentry. Thanks for checking out my channel. Over a two-week period, I plugged all of the holes on this live edge rosewood slab. I just did it whenever I had uh, free epoxy uh, left over. Current dimensions are 6'2 by 15 and 17 at the widest point. Out here in the shop, and I filled a bunch of these holes with epoxy. I am going to sand all of these holes because uh, I'm not sure which side is going to be my top, which side is going to be the underside. So uh, what I do have to look for is I made these boxes at 12, 11 and 3 quarter inches. So at the shortest point, I have like 13 and an eighth. So it'll be kind of close when I straight edge and cut it. Um, there's a couple holes I'm going to have to fill the rest of the way with CA glue. I'm going to start with 60 grit, and then I'll probably work up to 140. I'll cut it and probably sand up to like 220. I don't know, I think I'm going to go up to 400 on this project, so not quite decided yet. So normally I slack the project before I fill uh, any holes with epoxy. I'm going to end up using this um, oxalic acid to try to get rid of uh, the bleed from the dye. I have this clamped down. I just mix some oxalic acid with water, and uh, only in these two holes did I not pre schlack everything uh if you schlack it uh, there's no bleed through on any of the dye uh but i had a little extra epoxy left over and i had just bought the slab so i was like oh well i can fill a couple of these holes right away and it ends up being the bottom side so here's the bottom side uh i'm, I'm making a desk so i have a half inch overhang and i'm trying to see where i can cut my straight edge line I need 22 and a half inches for my chair. I think I end up giving it an extra half inch of play. And then here is the straight edge line that's going to be the back of the desk. And I have at least three quarters overhang at the shortest point, including the live edge on the front side. I set up a fence uh, for a guide for my circular saw. Now I've done this in countless other videos. So just check out uh, any other videos that I have. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Now, I two pass this. I, you don't want to go through the whole thing on one pass because I have gotten stuck before. And it's not fun. You do everything because you don't want to bend the blade. And this is the sun exposure. Just uh, from working one day, it changed that much. Now, I ended up uh, changing my saw blade to a ripping blade because I was ripping a long the side of the slab because I wanted to make it uh, as narrow as I could because of the space that I have for this project it wasn't much so I'm just showing you guys how I changed the saw blades and why I changed it so the red one is a finish blade and yellow is a ripping blade I am ripping this board lengthwise so it'll just give me a easier push through on the cut uh, when a finished blade would give you a better cut, but it's not designed for making that long of a cut. So I end up, uh, this is a jig, I'll put a link in the description uh, for how I made that. And uh, I measured 19 inches from the edge of the jig to get my 13 and a half um, length took me and my dad two passes in order to get this on the table saw needed a hand here i am sanding uh the slack off i slack all of my projects in between uh days because i am a one-man crew uh sometimes i'm lucky enough to get my dad to help me if i need some rips or to move something but most of the time it's just me and I can only go so so far each day in the couple of hours I have from when I get home from work and the sun goes down. It's really a passion uh, more than I'm not really making any money off of this woodworking. Uh, it's more for fun and I realized that I can just dilute all of the schlack with denatured alcohol rather than sanding it all off it'd go a little quicker so I end up uh, doing that on what would be the top later on but I cover everything with shellac so that it doesn't warp overnight uh, with the moisture content here I am I'm putting some C channel in so that the long term my project doesn't 
warp over time. It's just because uh, seasonal wood movement, it's just precautionary. Now, I kind of throw it on there to get my spacing, and normally you want to go uh, horizontally along with the grain pattern because normally it'll uh, wood cups along the grain pattern. But I ended up going lengthwise because it's only 14 inches at its biggest width. So I'm not too concerned about that over the long term. So I end up using my C channel. I kind of jerry rig clamped it up to get a straight edge because I have, with the price of wood these days, I don't have any plywood uh, laying around at uh, you know a six foot length. So I end up uh, working it out good. Here I am. Uh, when it's all said and done, uh, I used a 3 8 bit in order to cut the grooves out. And I left, I, I, I didn't flush the C channel. I ended up uh, leaving it high because I wanted the little extra height. Uh, normally, I would route it so that the C channel sits flush, but uh, in this particular project, I didn't. I'm rounding over the edge uh, on all of these uh, after I did a 45 on the corners. I thought it was going to be a little bit different of a look. It ended up kind of rounding over as I sanded everything, but I'm putting an eighth inch round over over the entire surface. Now I end up sanding this. Uh, I go with the grain and against the grain uh, twice each pass, and I have this uh, sped up a little bit because sanding is really boring. At the end of 180 grit, I end up water popping it. So uh, the finish that I use, Rubio Monocoat, uh, suggests to stop at 180 actually, but I am bringing it to 400 when it's said and done because Rubio Monocoat is traditionally a floor finish. Uh, so they recommend it so that it's not too slippery. Stop sanding at 180. Now they say water pop uh, after every grit, but you know it's a little bit of an overkill because you're just sanding away the same grain that you end up sanding anyways. Uh, here I am again going horizontally and vertically, and before I ended up sanding it at 400, and then I did a water pop, and then I did just a once over on the 400 grit because so you all you do is you knock down the raised grain i finished the bottom i put uh brought it inside because i didn't want to be moving it around so much my shop is partially outside so i, I didn't want it to rain while or leave it outside for two days uh while my project the finish was curing i'm using uh rubio monaco pure uh two oil i've used this before i've actually you know they say it's a really expensive finish but this is probably my fifth table that i have done with just a small 62 dollar can of finish now 62 dollars is kind of a lot up front but i mean i've had it for two years i'm going into the routed out cracks really good because uh there's no other way to get down in there uh and once I let that sit for about half hour, I walked away for half an hour, I, I wipe it down with towels. They say wipe off any and all access because it won't uh, cure properly. Now I end up flipping this over immediately to finish the top because, as I mentioned earlier, the wood movement. Just kind of dump it on and then tr watch it trowel. Rubio Monocoat is such an easy finish. All you do is you mix it with a ratio of 3 to 1, trowel it on, let it sit for a few minutes to soak in, maybe trowel a little more, and then I use one of those white pads to kind of buff it in. And then as I'm done with that, you just wipe it off and you're good to go. Honestly the easiest finish I've used for such a nice result every single time. Uh, here's one of those white pads that I end up buffing it in with. Uh, make sure you get all the sides and corners. Now, uh, the end grain could soak in a little more, a little faster, so I ended up uh, kind of focusing on that a little bit. Along with my front edge of the desk, uh, the live edge, I kind of really... Uh, 
scrubbed it in up there. I don't think I really have a video of that uh, here, but it's going to be a big wear, uh, touch, get touched because this is a desk uh, top. So over time it'll wear there more than anywhere else, but uh, it should, it's, it's one of the most easy finishes I've ever used. I highly recommend. I will put a link in the description for all of the products that I like. Now, uh, here's the C channel. All I'm doing is inlaying this. Uh, now, now that it's inlaid, I'm just uh, finding my spacing to get the correct size router bit so that I can use these, uh, put these furniture bolts in. Now, the theory behind these, uh, these furniture bolts is that this project I wanted to be able to take apart. I didn't want it to be one solid piece in case, because it was going to be pretty long uh, for moving, for having to pivot up a corner of stairs and whatnot. Uh, I wanted it to, it to be able to be removed. And there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. I can't believe you made it this far. Please leave a comment. Let me know, especially if I'm not related to you. Mark Jones, Blackstain Carpentry.